Welcome back to What RT Noobs for General Disturbance. This is the GW E100. It's the Tier 10 German SPG. It's located on the south spawn of Mines, and this one is under the command of Kick Citrash. Okay, well, the top tier German RT is based on their top tier heavy tank, the E100, which was completed, except for, of course, the turret, which was supposed to be the same turret that went on to the mouse but they never got around to actually receiving the turret so all that was left was the hull and that was completed just before the allies won the war now he's got a 21 centimeter howitzer because it only comes with one type of howitzer and he's got quite a long reload time 37.39 seconds so you can see he's not ready to fire yet but he will be momentarily marking where he's going he's loaded rounds out straight away direct hit on the t62 for 202 and the t49 for 502 i think he probably hit the t49 not the t62 and that's why he took more damage but he is a light tank and the t62 is a medium so he could have shrugged off more damage now again follow the results at the end you'll see that uh, there's a lot more penetrations in the old game way back in 2017 on the 9.2 update pre-HD but post stun okay he's loaded ready to go just waiting for a target and he wants the reticule to settle as well and that T62 looks like he's actually headed towards the cliff edge but we've spotted an object 261 right at the other end of the map and he's fired at it and he's killed it now he did move before um, looking to see the result and I think the reason for that was obviously he was conscious that he might get spotted by the guys on the hill and if he stayed in, um, uh, in RT view to, uh, to check the result he might have actually got taken out but from the hill. So I can excuse that, <laughs> only, only on the grounds that it did look like that T-62 was lining him up for a quick shot. Conqueror. The old version of mines, you remember there's a, the rock there instead of a tower. It feels less like a, a castle, more just like a hill. There's the Yag Tiger. And yes, he did do the same thing again. So it looks like I'm going to have to take control of aiming from now on. Because it looks like Kick Citrash likes to move the moment he's fired without looking to see what the end of battle results are. There's three replays, all featuring the GW E100 with varying degrees of results. I think you might be um, amazed at some of the things that these guys get up to. He's loaded, and yes, he does move straight away, but we got to see that some damage was done. At least I think he got some stun assist or no, not he didn't get any stun assist. Now that was off the Yank Tiger, but I think he did stun the batch at 25 ton. Okay, he's aiming over to the right now where the Yank Tiger was. There's a conqueror up there, and the Yank Tiger just took a huge dirt from the Type 5 Heavy. Type 5 Heavies won't be doing that in the future because obviously they're going to be neutered in favor of the uh, the Soviet Arty. Because as Klaus Kellerman pointed out, you see all of the nerfs that they're doing in the 1.13 update are basically to make Soviet armor more invincible. Not French, not British, not American. No, it will only make the Soviet heavies more invincible. So you can see this is a national nerf as well, which is disgusting if you think about it, because they're doing it only for their um, Soviet, pa uh, their Russian patrons. But then they do have more Russian patrons than any other nationality. So I suppose you might say they're looking after the patrons who've been most loyal to them. But the point is that people from other countries are going to be really annoyed that their national tanks are being adversely affected by these changes, especially RT. T-62, that's the one that he hit earlier in the game. He's not loaded yet, but he will be. Okay, he's loaded. He fires it in and splashes the T-62 for only 153, 
but he did three critical hits to the guy. There are two tanks up on the enemy at the moment, so it's a good battle for his team. But that uh, T TVP T5051 decided to go assassin and just took out our Death Star. In fact, we've got two enemy tanks roaming around the lower half of the hill. And our T49 wasn't in position to do some damage, but... Oh! That was so close, it flew right over the top of the TVP. Now, as you may know, the GW E100 was basically um, a wargaming fantasy, just like the Conqueror Gun Carriage, because the Germans never actually introduced or even thought about the GW E100 as such, because, uh, well, they were at the time building the GW Tiger. That was what was uh, being worked on, and they did have the hull of a GW Tiger completed, even though the guns were actually laying on the ground nearby at uh, Hausenbeck, where they were being tested. Okay, there's uh, that T-62 sitting right at the edge of the hill, at the clifftop, and I think some of his teammates are indicating that. In fact, the t our T-49 is saying, hit that T-62, will you, please? Instead, I'm afraid... I'm afraid that Kick Sick Crash is actually paying more attention to the guys on the east side than that T-62. Yeah, he keeps indicating, but nobody's paying attention to him. There's the T-62, obviously going up the other end now. Or is he going around the corner? And he's, he and the TVP are trying to fend off the Wizzy 120 and Centurion who are trying to come in and he suddenly realised that he might get a shot on the TVP no, the hill is in the way he can't get a shot oh, but he can hit that T49 and ooh, the T62 just killed our Wizzy 120 rounds out no, he didn't get that one, he did stay to look though, good now with two tanks behind the enemy. Okay, T62A has come to the east side of the hill to try and highlight where the Type 5 Heavy is or find him. He might try a shot poking through the gap. Now, back in the day, you could actually go down the side of the cliff on the old version can't do that now if you try to do it now you might actually come a cropper the trick was to actually drive sideways as you're going down the cliff edge and it puts less uh, pressure on the vehicle when it hits the bottom there he is again keeps poking get the shell on him rounds out oh what happened there the shell hit the bottom of the hill not the top that shouldn't have happened. Okay, Gorilla 15, no armor. Make very big bangs if you can hit them. He can hit that guy if he stays where he is, but he's trying to back up around the corner of this building. If he gets too far back though, he might get spotted with that T62A. Okay, Rads out, tries a a, a spl um, he tries a, a snapshot on that griller. It didn't work. He needs to fully dial in. And the Emil 2 has managed to get down to the South Island. And, well, he is being spotted by the T-49 and the T-124. He might be poking around the corner to try and get shots on them. no way we can hit them here and he's just killed our E4 Rams out oh good shot yep he got that one two kills still six enemies out there and they're now down to four players 
This is getting kind of awkward. We've got a tortoise guarding the cap. Type 5 and the T49 are holding the bottom of the hill. And unfortunately a T62A did come down the cliff edge. T49 is desperately trying to get away and the Type 5 kills them but the T49 was taken out by the Griller. Oh he got a bomb in here! Kicks it for a Vanish, managed to fire a round in there and he killed two enemy tanks. He got the Conqueror and the Griller 15 with one shot and that's now equalised the score. So he's given his team a real chance that they might be able to win this. Four kills now for him. T49 on very low hit points has decided to come south now. He's hit that guy before. He's hiding on that corner. If he pokes around the corner, kicks it through, will fire one in. On the off chance that he can splash him to death. At least that enemy T62A is gone. Derped by the Type 5. And there's the T49. He is getting closer and closer. Now I have the feeling he might have the 152. And he did just hit the Type 5 for a huge amount of hit points. So yes, I think he does have the 152. Their own T49 is saying, is pinging the map, saying where he thinks they should focus. He's saying, please shut up. Thank you. <laughs> yes, too much pinging by the T49. He needs to concentrate. Okay, the T49, enemy T49, should be on that corner. He's marked the spot to let his teammates know where he's looking. And the T49 says, no. Well, if you're not going to shut up, you're going to persuade your teammate to lose the game. Oh, splash kill. TVP stayed too close to the edge and Kick Citrus did manage to get a shot, a snapshot on target this time. They're saying the Bat Chat 25 ton is AFK, which means that there's only one enemy tank still alive and playing. And that's the T-49 and he's just taken out the Tortoise. So that means he must have come around the corner. He must be behind one of these rocks. Now back in those days, there was that nice little bush there, which meant that you could actually get shots on the enemy without being spotted before it was too late. But, yep, RT49 says he's just trying to help you. And just trying to help you retard. That's not a very nice way to address your teammates. Now he's trying to work out where the Bat Chat 25 ton is to lay around right on top of him. Well, that looks about right. No hit points recorded. He's got 12 rounds left so he can keep going. He said, but stupidity is without help. And the tortoise is saying, no help idiot. Well it is true, he's not helping, he's distracting. Type 5 has decided to go looking for the uh, Bat Chat. But that kind of leaves us alone with the T49. If he comes around that corner, Kip Citra should be able to take him out with one round. But he's now got to hide in this corner. And that means the T49 could come in behind him. And he's in the cap. And here he comes. Yes! That's a kill. That's a top gun. And that leaves one enemy left. And he's AFK. The Bat Chat 25 ton AP, the tier 9 French light tank is sitting near the cap area. Actually, it's not a light tank, it's a medium. And he's sitting near the cap area and he is now a splash kill. The Type 5 just put a huge round into him. Kick Citrus can win the game with one shot from long range, right from the other end of the map. Rounds out. Oh, and the... Type 5 gets the kill, but the game is over and it's a victory. And this battle has started rather suddenly. It's a grand battle on the uh, Nebelberg map, and the player is Met CZ. So I think he's Czech. Maybe. 
Okay, GW E100 yet again. We've seen how uh, Kit Citrus managed to do rather nicely in his one. Let's have you see how Mech gets on. It's got one mark of oh two marks of excellence, or is it one? I think that's one mark actually. Yep. Now the maximum speed of the GW E100 is only 40 kilometers an hour, so it's not very fast. But it is a very heavy tank. It weighs, um, well, try to remember how much it weighs now, actually. It's 100 tons. What am I saying? Total weight is supposed to be 87 tons, but according to Wargaming, it's a 100 ton tank. Now, Grand Battle, 30 versus 30. Each side has already lost one player. All Tier 10. Rounds out. And he damaged the T-62A with Splash. I think the tank that he was actually aiming at had already moved. Now the good thing about the GW E100 is it has 30 rounds of ammo. You get considerably less with the Object 261 which is kind of surprising because normally it's the other way around that Soviet RT gets more ammunition than other RTs and other RTs run out. But the Object 261 does habitually run out of ammo during a game. It's happened to me more than once. Okay we've got a Death Star now who's badly damaged and on fire, and he explodes. Okay, they're up by two tanks at the moment, but it's with the grand battle, it can change in a split second. You can be down by as much as five tanks. Oh, he got a kill. He blind killed the batch at 25 ton, aiming at the 113. So the guy must have been sitting behind the 113 taking pot shots and the shell landed long he did damage the 113 because uh, you're seeing that he's got some stun 101 hit points of damage and he just got struck by RT again it's four RT on this team rounds out lands in front of him for 261 I'm getting loads of stun assists. Look at that. 1,028 stun assist. Another 355. He's almost dead. Next round will kill him. It's just quickly checking to see if there's another target. And yes, the a round has killed him, so he's out of the game. Selecting a new target. I think the one thing is, oh, we've got another clicker. Yeah, a pinger, actually, not clicker. Pinger. You know, those people who annoyingly ping the map saying, thinking they're being helpful, but in actual fact, they're not. They're being a real nuisance. Direct hit on the engine bay of a T125. Left him on only 34 hit points. So both that Object 140 and the E5 are now vulnerable. I think that Object 430 is going to be tempted to just go around the corner and finish that guy off with an HE round. And our pinger is still there. He's saying, ping ping, I got killed out of the game very too early. Ping ping, I'm annoying. Rounds out. Oh, that was good. He actually got the kill on the E5 and the shell actually hit the IS-4 and splash the five out of the game. Okay, the E4 is taking damage, uh, or E4, the IS4 is taking damage, and we're picking up the stun assist. Ouch, the 430 just got hit by the enemy RT there. Here we go. Runs out. Oh! 
Long flight time for the shuttle. It is at the other end of the map, so it's a four-second delay. And there goes the IS-4. Yeah, you have to remember that. On these maps, you are playing on a very large map, and so there's a flight time delay between the shell going out and arriving. And, of course, that's why sometimes, as you often hear, I'll say round out. It will tell you it's on the way, but it might take some time to get there. Which tank drivers don't often have this problem. We do, but they don't. Now that's not within the flight path of the shell. He's trying to sort it out, but the building keeps getting in the way. He could splash it off the building. I've done that a few times. You can't hit the target because the building's in the way, but you aim the shell for the side of the building that he's next to and splash him to death that way. Okay, he's got a much better target to go for near the church. It's the church out near the water. Good sniping position out there. Rounds out. Long flight time. We're still only two tanks up on the enemy, but we've got plenty of space between us and the enemy vehicles. But as you saw, Met wasn't actually relocating it between shots. I guess at this point in the battle, most of the RT are actually focusing on doing damage to enemy tanks, not counter battery. But it does help sometimes to keep moving between shots, just to ensure that you've got a guarantee that the enemy's not going to get a quick kill out of you. Okay, he's trying to dial in on the mouse. Rounds out. Looks good. Splashes him for 626 according to the book. But it was actually 261 damage. He did get some stun assist though. You can see somebody is actually using that... Um, mod which tells people how long until your next reload of course um i think many of you actually know that one of the changes that's coming in in 1.13 and another close hit right it's beside the mouse yes one of the changes that wargaming is going to be bringing in is they're going to be putting the health bar or rather a health circle around each of the enemy tanks on the minimap as well as in the uh, the tables at the top of the page and what this will do is it will tell you the actual health of each individual vehicle. Now it used to be illegal, and although people would have mods which could actually tell them the health of an enemy vehicle, that would actually appear. Even if Wargaming weren't allowing it, uh, you can actually use a mod which would tell you regardless. But Wargaming made that illegal a couple of um, updates ago, quite a long, quite a few updates ago. So you weren't able to see how much each individual enemy had in the way of health. But they're bringing it back. They're now saying basically that something that was Ill an illegal mod is now a legal mod. And of course it does give you a significant advantage to know what health is held by the enemy tank if there's more than one enemy tank. Of course you can use the new toolbars which will actually tell you the overall health of the team. And that is another mod that's been around and legal for a long time. But uh, Wargaming are now making it legal for you to know the value of the health on each of and every individual enemy. I don't think that's really all that fair because it does give the enemy a, an advantage... And I can see why they took it out of the game originally. If you've got uh, one or two tanks which have got all the health of a team and a few active tanks are the ones that are actually doing the damage, but they've got very much in the uh, very very little health, then obviously the enemy's going to be encouraged by knowing that their best players are quick kills, whilst their bad players are not. And he's got a bombardier. He's just taken out the IS-7 and the 113 with one shot. 
My gum. Yeah, I've heard you say lol. <laughs> that certainly was. Got a bombardier out of two enemy vehicles. Okay, there's still a bunch of enemy vehicles up on the island near the church. A Jaegeru. That would make a very nice target. Rounds out. Long flight time. Nope, that hits the rock face. There's 4 minutes 10 seconds left in the game. And, well, now we're only one tank ahead of the enemy. We're moving across in a kind of broad front, actually. I don't think we're making any progress near the town, simply because of that uh, those snipers up on the island. And there's an enemy Jaegeru, right for killing. Rounds out. Looks good. Long flight time for the shell, and unfortunately missed. Ouch, the leopard just took a hit from the strip. We're going to be loaded momentarily though, and that strip's going to take one hell of a clout. Rounds out. 434 hit points. The alpha damage of the 21 centimeter gun is 1100. It will penetrate 53 millimeters of armor. Considerable period of stun as well. You can maximum stun duration 31 seconds way back then. It's almost loaded, ready to go. We're one tank down on the enemy now. All that striv is a one shot. Here we go. Line up, line up, line up. He's reversing into it. Well, he didn't get the kill. That actually went to the Conqueror gun carriage who just got a shell in just ahead of us. And unfortunately, the leopard one gets taken out by that Striv, the one who attacked him earlier. In fact, they're pinging the map on the south end of the map near Grid Square G0. I think they wonder if there's an enemy attack coming in from that direction. Round out in T62. That's a kill. That's his fifth kill in the game, Met Season. He might be the lead scorer, actually, at the moment. That shot just sailed right over the top of the M48 pattern. I don't think there's anybody over there to spot those guys, but there are tanks on the island we can see. He's blind firing. Okay, E4. We've had the two minute hooter, we're about to have the one minute hooter. And there's still eight enemy vehicles out there, but we aren't even with them. So it looks like it's going to be a draw. With that many enemy tanks still alive, it's very unlikely that they're going to get all of the team wiped out. And I don't think we're going to see any capping. Rounds out. It hits. Direct hit on the E4. I'm not so sure he's going to get another round in, but, well, he'll try to get the E3. Looks like it's going to be his last shot. There's E4. He did lose a lot of hit points. Go for the E4. Rounds out. He jogged the aim just at the wrong moment, but he did hit the E4. And I think that's going to be it. 10 seconds to go. Yeah, Metsu said he's disappointed. He got a lot of damage. And that's it. It is a draw. Huge amount of damage for Metsu said. Let's have a look at the third replay. The third replay is on the Malanovka map, Standard Battle. 
and the player is Tatsuya Sakimura. Again, he's got one mark of excellence on the barrel of his 21 centimeter. Again, this map looks very similar to the one you use at the moment, but uh, slightly different tree configuration. I'm not sure why he's aiming towards his teammates there, but I always aim for that bush, the spotting bush, first shot of the game. Nearly always somebody goes over there. Okay, got the T25 Pilot 1. That's the tank that, uh, that took part in the mini marathon. Long while back. Snapshot on him. And don't think we got anything out of that. In line with a lot of uh, German RT, the... Um, the traverse of the gun is very, very small. It's only six degrees either side of the center line, which means that you're constantly having to dial in on new targets every time you move the vehicle. Trying to get a shot there on the Waffentrager. And he hit him! He must have poked his head out to try and take a shot, and he took a round. Now, if that was the Waffentrager, he's probably lost virtually all of his hit points. And the next time we see him, he'll probably be nothing. And there's the Scorpion G. And he just took a massive hit as well. Probably from our Waffentrager Alpha Panzer Fear. Now, will he be able to get a hit on both of those guys? Because they got virtually no armor. Rounds out. And he does! He got a bombardier. He took out the Waffentrager and the Scorpion G one round. So all three players in each of the games has managed to get a Bombardier so far in the GW E100. Now he's moving about whilst he's in a mode. Notice there's a tree go down. There's normally a sign that somebody is in the vicinity because trees don't fall of their own accord. Just like bears don't shit in the wood. Or do shit in the woods. <laughs> How's that old saying go? It's normally if a tree falls, does uh, is anybody does it make a sound? And if you're trying to explain something that's definite, you say does a bear shit in the woods, and of course it does. Mind you, I've used the four-letter word, and the problem is now that YouTube's going <laughs> to They'll downrate the video. Near miss on the Lerva. 289. Now, next round will probably demolish that building. Can he put the round in there? He'll hit two at the same time if he does. Well, he did. And he got critical hits and damage on three enemy tanks. And he's picking up stun assist. That was a very lucrative shell, that one, because he got 136 hit points off the T57 Heavy, 301 off the Nerva, and 218 off the Defender. Yeah, this is the moment when you put the premium rounds in and literally reap the benefits. And both tanks go down. The Lerva was taken out by our defender. The T-57 Heavy got hit by the uh, E-75. And Tatsuya has just got a hit on the Conqueror as well for 367. So it's going quite well so far. They're three tanks up on the enemy. They're pushing the enemy back from the hill. And there goes another one, the Conqueror. Tatsuya is going to be ready any second.
Rounds out. Good hit. Solid hit. 490. 21 centimeter shell slamming into the side of the vehicle. It's bound to do a lot of damage. Okay, he's looking around for that Striv S1. And there's another tank, a T-25 pilot, been seen in the vicinity. But we're watching the T-25 pilot one. He wasn't there. He was actually there. And, oh, he got a near miss. He splashed him. And he's got stun assist as well. And the T-25 pilot is now out the game. Okay, we've got a Death Star right over the other end of the map. He could take him out with one round. With six tanks up on the enemy now, so this looks like it's going to be a rather convincing win. It's going to try a blind shot. Wants the VK to spot for him. There he is. Go for it. Rounds out. Oh, the Death Star pulls forward. going to get a lot of that in the uh, 1.13 update there's going to be a huge number of players who dodge a shell because they get some warning they manage to get out of the way quickly enough to avoid any damage and of course that means that arty will just be incapable of getting reasonable amounts of damage like we used to because this will be happening all the time and unfortunately the vk just got derped by the death star rounds out and a near miss, the 78. We're still five up on the enemy though, and he's getting closer and closer. Obviously that cuts down the flight time, which makes it more than likely you're gonna get an accurate shot on the enemy. And there's two tanks in there, not the Object 704, because another tree just went down, and I think that might be the enemy RT. It's the Object 261. We haven't seen him yet, but I think he is in there. There's the Striv. If the T49... Oh! T49 just got taken out by the 261, so he must be close. Okay, light it up. Another tree went down nearby. So there is a 261 in there somewhere, very close. He did derp the T49. Oh, no, it's not him. Because the object 261 is the other side and he got taken out. Ah, oh, it was the 132 that was knocking the trees down. There he is. And there's only one enemy left. It's the Death Star. Yeah, I think we're going to have to control the camera because uh, Tatsuya is going in and out, in and out. He's one of these ones who plays with his mouse whilst he's playing the game. Zooms in and out all the time. That can be a bit annoying for some players. <laughs> he's firing a blind shot in. Yeah, he's doing it again. I'm controlling the camera now. He's not going to be loaded in time before the rest of his team get there, I reckon. There he is. And the Leopard prototype finishes the game with a victory. Let's have a look at the end of battle stats for all three battles. Here's the end of battle results, and for Kixit Trash in the uh, GW E100, he managed to get an ace tanker in his mines game. He got a bruise medal for getting at least five critical hits, he managed to get 26. He got a gauze medal for doing more damage than eight times the hit points of his own vehicle. A top gun for getting at least six kills in the game, 
and he actually ended up with six. He got a high caliber for dealing the most damage, and he also managed to get a bombardier because he took out two enemy tanks with one shell during that game. I believe it was the, if I remember correctly, it was the gorilla and also the conqueror. Let's have a look at team score. There he is, highest damage with 5,040 hit points. The next high score being the Gorilla 15 that he took out with 4,510. And the TVP who managed to get 4,128. When it came to kills, he had the highest number of those as well with six. Three kills went to the Type 5 Heavy on his own team, the Gorilla 15, the T49 on the enemy team. And when it came to base XP, he's got the highest in that as well. So he's got the top in all three columns. 1,094 base experience points to kick Citrus. Uh, 1,044 went to the Type 5 Heavy. And 899 went to the Conqueror. He fired 20 rounds in that game. Got 6 direct hits, 6 penetrations and 12 splash. Damage of 5,040 hit points, of which 4,928 were at more than 300 meters. He damaged 10 of the enemy, killed 6, and did 1,599 hit points of stun assist of 12 stuns. On a free to play account, he earned 51,726 credits, and even after resupply of ammunition, still made a profit of 10,126 credits. 1,094 base XP, times 3 for the first victory, took away 3,282 experience points altogether, so not a bad game, an ace tanker, Gores medal. Top Gun, High Calibre, and a Bombardier out of that one for Kick Citrash. Let's have a look at the second battle with Met C Zen. Well, he got an Ace Tanker as well, even though it was a draw. He got a Bruiser Medal for getting at least five critical hits. He got 22. He got a Fighter Badge for getting at least four kills. He ended up with five in the end. That's one third of the... Well, it's not one third of the enemy team, because, of course, it's a 30-30. So that's one sixth of the enemy team. Uh, but he also got a Gorse Medal for doing uh, more damage than eight times the hit points of his own vehicle. And, of course, he got a Bombardier out of that game as well. If we look at the team score, we can see... And, yes, he says it's a blind Bombardier. <laughs> yes, it was. He... Didn't get the highest damage in the game. The Striv 103B, that deadly guy on the enemy team, got 7,187 hit points. But Met CZ wasn't far behind with 6,887. So if he got a couple more shots in, I think he might have surpassed even that Striv 103. When it came to base XP, um, actually, it's the number of kills next, isn't it? Yes. Five kills went to Met, so he's got the highest in that. Four kills went to the Conqueror gun carriage on his own team. Three kills to the Jaegeru, and then also to two other members of the enemy team, both of their Jaegerus. And when it came to base XP, well, he's got the highest in that, was 788. So he's got uh, uh, the second in damage, but the tops in kills and the tops in base XP. 788 for Met season. 649 for the Object 430 on the enemy team and 582 for their M48A5 pattern. He fired 22 rounds in that game, 5 direct hits, 5 penetration, 24 splash. Damage of 6,887 hit points, all of it at more than 300 meters. Damage 13 of the enemy, killed 5 and did 3,626 hit points of stun assist off 24 stuns. On a free to play account, he earned 73,552 credits, got 11,771 from battle payments and 4,919 for the achievements award. That's because he got a epic medal or a battle hero medal in a losing or drawn game. This was a draw. 90,242 credits altogether and after ammunition resupply took away 44,482 credits profit. 788 base XP. 462 for the Achievements Award here, 1,250 from Personal Missions Payout and took away 2,500 experience points altogether. So he got top damage on Artie um, and he got a Blind Bombardier, but sadly it was a draw because his team were just incapable of getting rid of those tanks on the island and moving forward. And I think if they had got rid of that island, that would have changed the game, but uh, they, it might have cost them a bit to do it. Let's have a look at the third game. That's the one on Malinovka and Tatsuya Sakimura managed to get an ace tanker in his GWE 100. He got a bruise medal for getting at least five critical hits. He got 22. Another Gauls medal for doing at least eight times the hit points of your own vehicle in damage. A confederate for hitting more of the enemy than anyone else on his team. 
Well, High Caliber for dealing the most damage in the game, and yet again, another Bombardier. But this time round, it was two tank destroyers. He got the Scorpion and the Waffentrager. And of course, it was him who damaged the Scorpion, uh, the, dam the Waffentrager, rather. The Scorpion was damaged by his Waffle Tractor. And as a result, he managed to get two kills, one shot. Let's have a look at the team score. Well, in this one, we can see Dig at the highest damage, 4,560. And the next high score was the Object 704 in the enemy team, 4,274 to him. And after that, it was our Defender who got 3,372. When it came to kills, it was the Defender who did the best with three kills. And you can see Tatsuya managed to get two kills along with the Death Star, the T95, the FV215B, the Death Star on the enemy team, and their T25 pilot number one. When it came to base XP, he's second place because the Defender managed 1,250, being a tier 8 heavy tank. And 1,237 went to Tatsuya, tier 10 RT. And 870 went to the T34 on his own team, another tier 8. He fired 14 rounds in this, in this game, less than the others. 3 direct hits, 3 penetrations, 12 splash. Damage of 4,560 hit points, all of it at more than 300 meters. Damage 10 of the enemy, killed 2, and did 3,901 hit points of stun assist off 13 stuns. On a premium count here, 97,670 credits, and after ammunition resupply, took away a health deep profit of 68,550 credits. 1,856 XP. Times two for the first victory took away 3,712 experience points altogether. So three very individual games in the GWE 100. One of them was a draw, but he still did almost as good as the other two. And in each case, they all managed to get a bombardier with their 21 centimeter howitzer. I think you uh, you can see that back then the GWE 100 was very good at doing damage to the enemy. So uh, congratulations to all three players. Even if uh, you didn't get a, a win out of that one, um, you certainly did show that you are capable in the GWE100. If you enjoyed that replay or those replays, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And thank you for watching.